Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Doug Dagnabbit from Modern Warzone and ModernWarzone.com. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the best possible long range loadout you could build for the STG. Um, this could be a potential competitor for the Bryn once it catches a nerf here soon. Um, we don't know for sure that the Bryn's going to be nerfed. I have a video on my channel covering the best loadout for that. Um, but in today's video, we're going to be only focusing on the STG and keep in mind that this is only for long range. Um, it's also very viable at mid range, but I tried to make this loadout guide for long range options because it seems like we don't have that many good long range options in Caldera right now. And you get into a lot of long range engagements. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys learned something new today. Um, I'm going to be going through each individual attachment. I tested them all in plunder with both from 10 meters and 50 meters and, uh, observed their recoil plots with all types of different attachment combinations to find out what works best together to give you the best long range STG. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. If you wanna see me do other gun guide videos on something you think that I might be missing or some type of funky attachment combo that may be making a gun broken, be sure to leave it down in the comments down below or any advice you have for future gun guide builds. I do appreciate doing this for you guys. And uh, I've been getting a lot of comments saying that um, you know, you're copying True Game Data, you're copying J God. Well, I'm friends with those guys, and they're encouraging me to continue to make this type of content. And I don't think that testing weapon builds is something that we as a community should be gatekeeping. The more people we have testing builds, the more we're able to find, you know, secret patches or secret nerfs, buffs, all of that type of stuff that usually happens under our noses because we're relying on two or three people to test every single thing in the game. So I hope you understand I'm not trying to steal anybody's content. I'm just trying to provide useful information for all of you. But with all that out of the way, let's get right into it. Let's try to hit 500 likes on this video, all right? Um, so I'm going to start off where I usually start off, and that's with the muzzle. I tested the Mercury Silencer, the MX Silencer, the Recoil Booster, and the F8 Stabilizer, and this is what I have to say. Um, the F8 Stabilizer is clearly the best when it comes to recoil control as well as accuracy, which is your horizontal recoil control. And it also adds damage range, which is actually very big for the STG. It doesn't have the longest damage ranges as compared to like the Bryn with that damage falloff barrel. So if you're not worried about popping up on the minimap, you can definitely run the F8 Stabilizer. Or if you want to increase your time to kill even more and you think that you can control your recoil good enough without a stabilizer, rock the recoil booster. In my testing, I found that the recoil booster like hardly increases the recoil at all, and it's mainly in between bullets because you're shooting a bit faster. Um, I will say, though, that I personally think the F8 stabilizer is more viable. The recoil booster will increase your time to kill by 6% on pretty much any weapon you put it on. However, I do believe on a build like this that can get quite bouncy at long ranges that a stabilizer would help you out more. And if you're going to choose to run either the MX Silencer or the Mercury Silencer, I do recommend the MX Silencer so that you don't lose out on any damage range on this build. So that's the muzzles out of the way. We're going to go through the barrel. Um, honestly, there's no debate here. For a long range STG build, you should be running the v VDD 760mm 760mm 05B. Um, there's really no question asked. It increases your damage range and greatly helps with recoil control. Um, and this is one that I've been getting a lot of people asking questions about is I continue to recommend the M1941 handstop, and that's because I'm actually testing these things. But the Carver foregrip is also a good option. It's what you first unlock. Um, I did test both of these against each other today um, when I was testing out this build. And I got to tell you, they literally have almost the same recoil plot. If anything... The Carver foregrip has almost the exact same recoil control um, vertically as the M1941 handstop, but it does have more horizontal recoil. So when you use the Carver, it'll be dragging more diagonally than it does with the M1941 handstop. As well as with the M1941 handstop, you don't lose out on any aim down sight speed. So I recommend this on every single build for anybody as long as they have it unlocked. Um, I also tested out the M1930 strife angled, and I can say that it's not a bad option. I will still say that I believe the M1941 handstop is the better option of the two. I also tested out um, the bipod. The bipod can pretty much break the recoil on any of these weapons, but you do have to crouch or be mounted to get that effect. So that's up to you. If you really aren't good at controlling recoil, rock a bipod. Uh, I don't really recommend any of the other attachments. If you're also good at controlling recoil, feel free to rock the Mark IV skeletal or the Mark VI skeletal. 
All right, now we're going to move on to the magazine, which is actually going to be a huge difference. So I went in and tested the difference between the 50 round mag, the 60 round mag, and the Russian short 45 round mag. And what I found is that you absolutely do not want to be running the 60 round mag, and you do not want to be running the damage mag if you're really trying to go for a long range build for the STG. As a mid range build, um, that's a totally different argument. That's something that I maybe I'd have to do another video on, but I can say for now that if you're running a long range build, absolutely run the 50 round mags to increase your fire rate. You do lose bullet velocity and range and bullet penetration, but none of that matters if you're not landing your shots anyways because your recoil is uncontrollable. So now we'll move on to the next part, ammunition. On any long range build, unless you're one of those people rocking combat scout and you really are struggling with visibility and you're using incendiary rounds to make that combat scout say procced, um, highly, highly, highly recommend lengthen. There's pretty much no better option in this category for a long range build. Um, now we're going to go to the grips. I tested out all types of grip attachments because I've had people telling me, oh, the groove grip, the, oh, the hatch grip, oh, uh, the rubber grip. Oh, why didn't you test out the stipled grip or the pine tar? I tested them all with this one. What I can tell you is they didn't make hardly any difference when I swapped between them. It was shocking. Uh, the polymer was one of the strongest attachments on every other weapon, but I think because the uh, STG doesn't have as many accuracy and recoil during sustained fire attachments that you can stack on top of it, that it's just not as strong as it looked on other builds. So honestly, I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm using the polymer grip still. You can use the rubber grip. It honestly had almost the identical recoil pattern. Um, you can use, the, I'll say the groove grip and the hatch grip did not give me the same results everybody's been bragging about on my Twitter replies. Uh, the horizontal recoil was still almost the exact same at both 10 meters and 50 meters. Um, but you can also use the stipled grip. So polymer grip, stipled grip, and the rubber grip are all viable for this STG build I'm recommending. Now, the most interesting two results of the entire test period. Uh, for your perk two, you can choose between any of these. If you're still leveling your gun, use surplus. I've tested that myself. You get 20% increased weapon XP per kill in both the pre-game lobby and a regular game lobby, which actually ends up adding up to a lot. Um, or if not, run fully loaded, so that way you always have ammo. This thing is going to suck your ammo dry at long range, or run on hand for equipment dexterity. Um, now let's get into the actual, like, I was not expecting this, so... What I was planning for this build to be was going to be Nerves of Steel because I'm pretty confident that that increases your accuracy and recoil control a, a solid bit if injured or suppressed. So if you're in the middle of a gunfight and somebody else is kind of whiffing a few bullets on you, you, you can turn into a straight laser beam. I thought that would be it or I thought I would have to choose between Focus for flinch resistance. But in my testing, I'm going to show you guys a screenshot in just a second, but Vital hardly increases the recoil at all on the STG. Uh, Vital made a much bigger difference on every other build I've tried this with. That's kind of sketchy. And I know True Game Data has ran the numbers on what Vital actually does in game. I know it only increases your damage by, I believe, about two. And in a lot of instances, that's not going to decrease your shots to kill, which means it's not going to lower your time to kill. But in Caldera, most of us are running trios, duos, quads. There's a lot of team shotting situations where those two damage points can actually come in and make a big, big difference. And you also don't know all the circumstances that you're going to be running into that makes the Vital actually a lot better on this STG than I planned for it to be. So I highly, highly, highly recommend. I think this is what is going to separate this build from most of the others you see people running. Run Vital. The recoil control and accuracy is almost identical almost identical the only difference is that you'll see a bigger gap in between bullets but people that can control their recoil anyways are hardly going to notice that um, and if you really want to move around the map fast and run more of a mid-range build which this video is not for run acrobatic now we're going to get into the stocks um, I will say I tried the Krosnik S11S folding and it really didn't affect the recoil that badly. So if you think you can control recoil and you just want like a decent long range build, rock that bad boy. Um, I also tried remove stock, didn't affect the recoil that much. It was shocking. Uh, I used the Constance Tactical, not bad at all. Definitely improved the recoil of those first six or seven bullets, but I do not recommend that. I honestly came into this thinking I already knew what the meta build was going to be, and that was going to be the VDD-34S weighted. 
Not the case. Um, this one has some of the biggest downsides with movement speed and aim down sight speed. And then I tried the VDD27 Precision, and I was shocked at the results. The VDD27 Precision actually provided more recoil control and more horizontal recoil control and all these other different things besides aiming stability that the VDD34S weighted offers. But the only penalties you get are hip fire accuracy and movement speed, so you don't lose out on your aim down sight speed. So by far, run the VDD27 Precision. If you try to use the Constance Tactical, which would not be that bad of a choice, um, it actually makes your screen look really weird, especially if you're on PC and you run more than 80 FOV like consoles do. Um, it it kind of is weird. It gives you this weird like field of view, and you like have the stock in your face a little bit. So I don't really recommend that one that much, but the VDD27 Precision is it. I also had people telling me that um, I do believe that Teep was saying on his stream that the 2.5x uh, G16 has the least um, visual recoil out of all of them. So I tested that as well. And while I can say that visual recoil is something that's very hard to quantify and be able to compare with other weapons without having a side-by-side -side video of them, which I do not. I'm not that good at editing. Sorry, guys. Um, I did test the, with the exact same attachments between the 2.5x and the uh, 3 to 6 times that I always recommend, the SVT40 PU scope 3 to 6 times. And the recoil control was the same. The recoil plots were the exact same. So whether visual recoil is different on them or not, I can't exactly confirm. But I can confirm to you that it does not affect how much recoil control you're going to have if you choose between those two scopes. But this is my completed build, F8 Stabilizer, VDD760MM, 05B, SVT40 PU Scope 3 to 6X. And honestly, I'm probably going to rock with the 2.5X because this gun does have some balance even with this build. Um, VDD27 Precision Stock, M1941 Hand Stop, 7.62 Gorinko 50 Round Mag, lengthened as your ammunition, polymer grip, or you can run um, the stipled grip, or what was my other option, the rubber grip. Those all seem to be almost identical. Make sure you're running vital. Um, if somebody wants to disprove me in the comments that that's just a stupid suggestion, all I'm saying is, is that it hardly, hardly increases your recoil at all, and it gives you extra damage at all ranges. I don't really see a downside to rocking that over the other options. And then between fully loaded, surplus, or on hand, whichever one you want to rock with those. But hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sorry it went on a little bit longer. Um, this one surprised me with a lot of this. Honestly, every single weapon I have tested so far has surprised me in one sh one way or another. And I think it's because a lot of these attachments stack in weird ways with multipliers that they give you on recoil reduction and all that. And I think there might be a hard cap on how much you can reduce certain aspects of a weapon. But um, I do appreciate you guys stopping by. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I have a lot more gun guides coming out. Um, one that I'm really looking forward to doing is once the Sprint nerf happens, uh, unveiling what I believe is going to be the new meta. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you on the next one.